University of Toronto. With us today are Carolyn Fern from the Ontario Coalition for Better Child Care, Abigail Doris from the Toronto Coalition for Better Child Care, Wendy LaRose, who's a parent in that system, the Councillor Shelley Carroll. Uh, we're also joined by Councillors Cressy, Councillors Wong Tan, Councillor Perks, and Councillor Fletcher. Um, Sasha Barak, another parent, and Eva Laxon from the neighborhood group Child Care. You know, the announcement by the federal government in April of a national affordable child care strategy was welcome news by families, child care advocates, children, uh, child care regulators and operators like the city of Toronto. And while they might not know it yet, I actually believe that, uh, that, that children will rejoice one day as they grow up having having aged through an affordable and accessible child care system. City of Toronto has long called for a national affordable child care plan and funding to go with it. But this pandemic has only highlighted the importance of child care for our economy, our society, and indeed the families that depend on it so much. We've long known of the importance of early childhood education and that early learning and socialization have a positive impact on our young children. But we also know that it is a significant burden to the families that rely on it. There's, there's just not enough space and it's just too expensive. If you thought that housing was expensive for families in a city like Toronto, boy oh boy have I got news for you because Families can pay upwards of $2,000 a month for childcare for just one child. You know, it wasn't that long ago. It was actually quite recently that in my own family, and we have two kids, our childcare bill eclipsed our housing costs. Eclipsed. Families can't afford and shouldn't have to choose between both parents working and having a career and their kids getting a good and, and their kids getting a good education at an early age or going broke or further into debt they shouldn't have to choose and we see from other models around the world and even in our own country that there is another way and that it has a positive impact on our economy and on our society so what we're calling for is no matter what political party you're, you're, you're from, I think all of us agree that we need to build a solid foundation for our kids and we have that opportunity in this moment in time with the federal government coming to the table. So City of Toronto later on today will debate a motion put forward by Councillor Carroll and I that, that will call for uh, Toronto to reaffirm its support for early learning and childcare that is high quality, affordable, accessible, and inclusive, and support for the federal child care announcement in the April budget. Second, we call on the province and the federal government to immediately work and collaborate with the city to achieve that outcome. We know we can do it. We know our staff are ready to work on this and find a way for the city of Toronto to do our part. Um, we just need the other levels of government to work with us in order to achieve it. I'm going to pass it over to Carolyn Fern from the Ontario Coalition for Better Child Care. Carolyn. Thank you, Mike. Um, the federal child care plan is, it could be a game changer for Toronto families. And we're really lucky here in the city of Toronto that we've had, that the city has been a leader for so many years on child care and is so ready to go when it comes to um, expanding the system, growing the system. We have a growth strategy that's ready to be amped up um, to really make this work. But we've also seen over the last year just how fragile the childcare system is right now. And the pandemic has pulled back a curtain on a childcare crisis that many of us have known has been going on for years. Families struggling to put together childcare arrangements and, and pay for childcare. But it's also shown um, over the last year that motivated governments can collaborate and move quickly um, on when issues are important. And we've seen that here in Toronto and across Ontario with emergency childcare. Um, Toronto was a leader in opening emergency childcare um, facilities for frontline workers. Um, and they did that with the support of the Ontario government, um, with funding from the Ontario government to make those services free for families. 
and support of the uh, federal government. So I see that as a starting place where we can say, yes, all um, levels of government can come together when they're motivated, and now they need to make childcare a permanent priority. Um, so the motion today, I think, is so great to see. Once again, we have so much support here in at City Council um, for childcare, um, as we have over the years. And um, just a message to um, you know all levels of government: we need to come together. We need to focus on childcare because it can be the core of our economic and social recovery um, going forward. So thanks so much for having me, Mike. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks. Uh, next up, we'll go to Abigail Doris from the Toronto Coalition for Better Child Care. Abigail, go ahead. Yeah, hi there. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Um, so, as mentioned, I'm with the Toronto Community for Better Child Care. And what we're hearing from child care centers across the city is that many families in Toronto are making that really difficult decision to withdraw from their child care programs. And it's not because they no longer need that care or depend on that care but instead it's because they simply can't afford it. For families with young children, we know that their childcare center is an extension of their family, of their community. But we're also hearing from centers that families are being forced to leave the city. And again, that is an incredibly difficult decision, but it's because they can't afford both housing and childcare in Toronto. And as you had mentioned, Mike, currently in Toronto, we have the highest childcare fees in all of Canada it's often equivalent to having a second mortgage or rent every month. And I think for families, the pandemic has really exacerbated intersecting obstacles that were already existing, including job security and housing security. But this in turn impacts their ability to access care and it creates this loop of inaccessibility. Related to this, child care centers are seeing really low enrollment rates right now. Um, very few centers are at full capacity and the current market-based system can't sustain by continually increasing those family fees. So we have this opportunity right now to be leaders and truly the Toronto childcare community, we are leaders in Canada. We have an opportunity to support families in really meaningful ways, especially marginalized families, single parent families or single caregiver families and women. So we really need all levels of government to be working collaboratively to ensure that we can achieve this promise of a universal, accessible, affordable nonprofit childcare system for young children and families in Toronto. And I think we've really seen that leadership and that, that drive from city council in Toronto to be true childcare champions. So I really think that this is something that we can achieve and it would be really meaningful. So thanks for having me today, Mike. Thank you very much, Abigail. Uh, next is Wendy LaRose, who's a parent. Hello, everyone. My name is Wendy LaRose. I'm a mother of two children. I'm also one of the peer parent coordinators for Toronto Parents for Child Care. And I've had the privilege of working in the field of child care for many years and seeing things from both ends of the spectrum. I can appreciate the hard work that child care staff do on a daily basis, especially now with this pandemic. However, I also see things from a parent's point of view to have affordable childcare, particularly for marginalized families who already have existing challenges with respect to social determinants of health. This pandemic has created a high demand from parents as it has been for myself. As a result, there are challenges at home for both parents and children. This includes high expectations, added responsibilities, and the stress of parents trying to monitor their children for hours throughout the day while working from home. This can potentially lead to losing employment because parents' quality of work is reduced due to their multiple responsibilities. This has been my experience, and it's not an isolated situation. Many parents across the city have similar narratives. Subsidy is not a solution, as waiting lists are way too long, and the cost of subsidized child care can still be difficult for marginalized families to pay, especially each month. Now, with parents trying to budget with purchasing safety products in the interest of protecting their families, that's even more of a burden. Affordable child care will allow parents the opportunity to work without the added stress of wondering how they'll be able to pay for child care at the end of the month, like I mentioned earlier. And it will allow parents to secure their employment to attend school without having to compromise their time. And children will be able to be a part of a child care system that is holistic that promotes positive social interactions in the interest of promoting healthy child development. 
So I stand in solidarity with the many parents across the city who expect far more from our governments. Child care is vital and must be considered a priority. Thank you to, to the Toronto City Councillors for supporting this motion. We appreciate you, Michael. Thank you very much, Wendy. In your remark during your remarks, it, it made me actually remember when I wrote in the child care amounts in my family household budget spreadsheet and how happy I was when I could write in the lower amount when they moved up a, a different room. And and just thinking about what what and that comes from a family of 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 some means that have parents with good 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 salaries coming in and for those families that uh, that that don't have that when they're waiting on a subsidy just how significant that would be can, given that just that $200 when my kid got bumped up to the toddler room meant a lot in our in our monthly budget um, next up we have councillor Shelley Carroll Thanks, Mike, and I'm, I'm very happy to be a seconder of your motion and council will support Mike's motion later today because we know how important this is. Uh, a 1 size fits all approach is, is is what universal affordable child care means. It means that something that works for for uh, low income parents will actually work for for parents as Mike says of some means to put it into a context for people living outside Toronto. We're in a situation now where where mom and dad could have a combined income of $200,000 and they still can't afford to have a second child and keep working. That's that's how uh, uh, extreme the situation is. So to rebuild our economy to to help build the the ability of parents to to get out of poverty that may have been brought on by COVID-19, we need to avail ourselves of this wonderful offer of the federal government. But it won't happen unless the provincial government steps up as well. It simply won't happen because what is before us is a proposal that all three orders of government work together to fundamentally change our child care system to make it universally affordable. That's what's going to make the change. And if we're building back better, that's how we do it. We know that at the federal level, there is broad support for this because this is coming from a minority government, but they're stepping up now to set up something that will live well beyond the government of the day. It will change the way we deliver childcare in Canada. But here in Ontario, we need to see the provincial government an active partner in making it happen because we have ambitious timelines. We want to see childcare fees reduced by up to 50% by 2022. That's by next year, and it's only possible if all three orders of government step up. Today, council is stepping up. The federal government's already there. We need the province of Ontario to join us. So that's basically uh, uh, what's before us today. That's why we're moving this motion and why we have all of these wonderful parents and child care actors with us today. And so we want to open it up to you uh, for questions. We have a moderator. Marco is going to moderate your questions. Thank you. So if anyone from the media wants to use the raise hand function, you've done this before. Give you a couple more seconds. Sounds like you may have gotten everything you need. Okay, well, that's easy. Um, thank you all for joining us today and to everyone uh, on the panel, many thanks for uh, for joining us. We look forward to two o'clock voting on the motion. Thanks for your motion, Mike. Uh, bye everyone, have a lovely day.